guys, my name is Kesa and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk all things hormone and period related. This is the second of three videos that I will be uploading discussing the birth control pill. If you have not already seen my first video, The Truth About the Pill Part 1, then I suggest you do so now because it covers all the basics that will come into use when watching this video today. So I finished my last video by telling you that there is research out there that suggests that the pill can influence women's love and sex-related brain circuitry, indicating that the pill might be able to influence the type of romantic partner that women are attracted to. And so today, I wanted to delve into this further with you guys and share with you what is, in my opinion, some pretty groundbreaking research. Before we dive in, I just wanted to say that a lot of the ideas and the research that I discussed in this video has been extracted from this amazing book, How the Pill Changes Everything, Your Brain on Birth Control by Dr. Sarah Hill. She is a evolutionary social psychologist. Um, this book totally changed the way I view the pill and I definitely recommend that you give this a read um, after you've watched this video. Okay, so let's get straight to it. So my first fun fact for you, in a normal healthy menstrual cycle, the type of qualities that women look for in a romantic partner changes across the cycle because of the sex hormone estrogen. Research has shown that when estrogen levels peak, so around the time of ovulation and when fertility is high, this tends to nudge women's preferences in their romantic partners to favor qualities that are associated with masculinity and higher testosterone. So think attraction to partners with square cut jaws, broad shoulders and brow ridges. But when women start taking the pill, so this is a time when women are no longer ovulating, they are experiencing relatively low estrogen levels day in and day out, their attraction preferences actually change. How do you ask? Well, let me tell you about a study that Dr. Sarah actually references in her book to back this claim up. So, researchers brought heterosexual women into a research lab and allowed them to use a special computer program where they were able to manipulate the appearance of photographs of male and female faces. They could change the appearance of the men in these photographs by adjusting things like their jaw height, their cheekbone prominence, their face width, all those sort of testosterone markers that I mentioned earlier on. And one of the things that the researchers asked the women to do was to manipulate the features on the male face to create the face of their ideal short-term or long-term romantic partner. And the women came into the lab and they completed this task at two different time points. Once was just before they started taking the birth control pill, and the second time point was three months after they had began. And the results of this study showed that pill-taking women exhibited an unwavering preference for men with less masculine faces and voices. In another study, these same researchers found that pill-taking women not only preferred somewhat less masculine faces, they were also more likely to choose these men as their partners, their romantic partners, so a much more long-term decision. And reading this totally blew my mind. The fact that women may actually choose different romantic partners based on things like facial characteristics compared to when they are on the pill and when they are off the pill is pretty jaw-dropping. Dr. Sarah doesn't leave it there. She delves into this a little further and examines the following question. If women who take the pill aren't all that interested in masculinity cues when it comes to choosing a partner, what exactly is it that they're interested in when it comes to choosing a romantic partner? Well, it appears that women on the pill are more interested in their partner's capability to provide and care for them. So another study worth referencing at this point, researchers conducted a survey looking at relationship quality on a sample of more than 2,000 women, each of whom had at least one child. Half the women in the sample were on the pill when they met their partners and the other half were not. The results showed that the women who chose their partners when they were on the pill were more satisfied with their partner's financial provisioning ability and their intelligence compared to the women who chose their partners when they were not on the pill. Now given that the pill is supposed to mimic the second half of the menstrual cycle, so when progesterone is high 
and when women are biologically preparing for a potentially fertilized egg and pregnancy, then this data is consistent with the interpretation that being on the pill makes women shift their mate preferences to favor qualities that could help keep them safe and secure in a future potential pregnancy. In simple evolutionary terms, money and intelligence over good looks. And this has been backed up in the results of brain imaging research. When compared to naturally cycling women, pill-taking women exhibited less activity in the reward centers of their brain when looking at masculine faces and more activity in these reward centers in response to monetary rewards. All very interesting, but one of the final observations that Dr. Sarah makes in her chapter looking at attraction that is perhaps the most shocking is the relationship between the pill, attraction and divorce rate. Because research has shown that women who chose their partners when they were on the pill were significantly less likely to divorce than those women who had chosen their partners when they were not on the pill. Even more fascinating yet is that when these pill-taking women did get divorced, they were overwhelmingly the ones who initiated it. Now this is all pretty provocative stuff, especially that last point I just made about divorce. And I just wanted to quickly echo assertions that all scientists make when publishing research, and that is all results are open to interpretation. And secondly, and Dr. Sarah makes this point herself in her book, is that the research looking into the brain on birth control is still in its early phases. And we still need lots more research before scientists can definitively state or claim that the pill has a notable influence on attraction. But even though there is so much more research to be done in this space, there is data out there that suggests that the pill can influence the type of person that a woman is attracted to. It's not something that you can deny. And I wanted to do this video and tell you about this book and share with you this research because I think it's important information that all women should be armed with. You know, whether you're thinking about starting the pill or whether you're already on it, what I've shared with you might not make a difference to your decision and thoughts about the pill. But at least you know that you are making the decision to start taking a drug or continuing to take a drug often for several years with your eyes completely open because there is no doubt we become different people when we are on the birth control pill. So that's it for today. In my next video, I'll be talking about how the birth control pill affects stress and I'll be sharing with you research that shows that women who take the pill do not have the cortisol spike in response to stress that every other healthy human does. And if you want to know more, please subscribe to my channel right now and you'll be the first to know when this next video has been up Uploaded. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you've liked it and let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you next time.